<laughs> well, welcome everybody. We're so happy to have you joining us in the late show. This is our Tuesday edition. And I would like to introduce myself as well as um, invite the um, co-hosts and guests who are joining me to introduce themselves. So I'm Emily Reagan. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Metropolitan State University in Denver, where indeed it is cold. <laughs> and I also serve as our part-time OER coordinator. And I've had the pleasure of being on the steering committee for Open Ed 2020. So this has been a really fantastic experience. And I'm joined by Haley, my co-host here for the evening show. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley Babb. I'm an open education coordinator with uh, Sparks Open Education Team, and I've been helping out a little bit here with the conference. I'm based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, so also very chilly for me tonight. <laughs> and we'll just go around. So Amanda, would you be willing to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Um, I'm Amanda Larson. I am the Affordable Learning Instructional Consultant at The Ohio State University, and I participated in this conference organization on the program planning team. And Jasmine, do you mind jumping in? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Jasmine Roberts. My pronouns are somewhere. It's weird when the Zoom background is like backwards. <laughs> Um, but I am a lecturer slash teaching professor at, Amanda, you didn't say it right, the Ohio State University. Um, yeah, I've been there for quite a while. I love my, my role there. And um, I also am a huge OER advocate. Um, years ago, not too long ago, I wrote an o uh, open textbook. And that really was the uh, impetus of my interest in open education and, and OER. And I also this year um, had the honor of serving on the steering committee uh, for this conference. And it's just been an amazing, an amazing experience just to have um, a unique collaboration type of experience on the steering committee. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And our uh, third and final guest for tonight is Stacy. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Stacy Katz. I'm the Open Resources Librarian slash STEM liaison, and I'm also an assistant professor at Lehman College, which is part of the City University of New York. I said, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad I don't have the institution up here. I knew it was Lehman College, and I thought it was maybe CUNY, not SUNY. Okay, so. Yep. No, no, City University of New York is. Oh, okay. You got Ooh. it. You're oh, right. good. Okay. You're well, right. it's not up here, but an earlier version of the slide has our institution. So my question is, why does it have to be the Ohio State University? I have no idea. <laughs> that is, I, I, I just, I, you know, I tell my students, I just work here. No, I'm just playing. I'm a, I'm a Michigan alum. That's the rival school. So I say that in a very sarcastic way when I say the Ohio State University. Yeah. Um, not too long ago, they tried to trademark the word the uh, to make it in the official. Yes, yes, they lost them. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for filling me in. We have two updates. Sorry, this is so huge, but this is really important breaking news from Twitter. There's been this um, controversy. Last night I said sketch and people were kind of calling me out in the chat. And I was officially wrong. <laughs> it is SCED, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but like I said, I think we have to just do the best we can with, with this pronunciation. But the officially, uh, I think we're going to try to say SCED uh, to follow what uh, the SCED folks prefer. But apparently, they're not too picky, which is good, because I sometimes struggle. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of with Team SCED as well. Okay, and then actually some other kind of breaking news is uh, Christina Ishmael, who's right now with OE Global, was named to the Biden-Harris Department of Ed review team, and that is just super exciting. So thank you, Stacy, for bringing that to my attention, and um, yeah, so super exciting. <laughs> okay, so that's our breaking news. Um, I just want to give each of my guests a chance or just a chance to profile a recent big accomplishment of each of my guests. So I just wanna shout out Amanda for her open education librarianship paper describing 
uh, this role of academic OER librarians. So um, that was an article that Stacy knows was long time coming. And um, I presented on it on at Open Ed last year. And um, it's real and in the universe now. And um, what I have noticed is that through that research, I have really, really moved into this space where I'm thinking a lot about advocacy for librarians. And, um, and so I've given other talks since then about like the temporary positions that we hold and that a lot of times OER work is sort of, sort of funded um, and the support that librarians need. And I am thinking about how that will grow in the future. Fantastic, thank you. And um, this has been really fun. So I just recently watched Jasmine's TEDx talk and it was fantastic. Do you wanna share a little bit about your experience doing that, Jasmine? Yeah, absolutely. So that was um, early last year. Um, it's hard to remember life pre-COVID for some reason, um, but it, it was it was an amazing experience. It's actually one of the highlights of, <laughs> can I be dramatic and say my life? I mean, it, it you know, not everyone can deliver um, or is afforded the opportunity to deliver a TED Talk. So it was amazing. Um, the title of it is called I'm, I'm Tired Talking About Race. And so there, I talk about just the emotional fatigue that people of color, in particular Black people, experience when they are, um, when one of two things happens, right? When they are assumed that they're racial experts um, and when they are just in general charged to explain their lived experiences and when that is met with, you know, color blindness or a, a belittlement of their racialized experiences. And so, Oddly enough, um, the inspiration behind that TED talk, not to go into it in too much detail because we are recording, um, uh, the, the inspiration behind that uh, was uh, uh, due to an experience that I had a couple of years ago at an open ed conference. And uh, if anyone who knows me knows that a lot of my work is fueled by anger and frustration, um, I, I very much Norn, the angry black woman stereotype proudly because it, it, it uh, produces really good work in my opinion. And so I say all that to say it is something I'm very, very proud of. And so if you haven't already checked it out, I do encourage you all to do so. Um, and so, yeah. Yes, I absolutely. And thank you, Haley, for throwing the link in the chat. So that's going to make it easy for you all to find that. And um, Stacy has also done a lot of fantastic work, and I thought this would be a really nice thing to highlight because some folks here are new to open ed, and I think this is a really exciting resource and also just won an OE Global Award. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, yeah, uh, Abby Elder and I developed the OER Starter Kit Workbook, which is a remix of her OER Starter Kit that she had remixed from a lot of OER resources, um, like meta OER about OER. And so um, it was just this like coincidence in timing last year, I think it was, I mean, I'm like Jasmine, I'm like pre COVID times, what did I even do? I don't remember. But we um, developed this OER starter kit um, workbook, really thinking about, you know, these resources that we have already for teaching, you know, faculty and working with faculty on developing OER, um, you know, that we have these in random places, but we kind of anchored them to her OER starter kit. Um, so we were able to do that. And also thinking about places where they don't have like an OER librarian and someone to work with. So um, there's kind of multiple purposes to it. It's actually also hosted in Manifold, which is a platform developed by the CUNY Graduate Center University of Minnesota Press and Cast Iron Coding, which won an OE Global Award for Best Tool. So it's got like multiple awards going on at the moment, which is very exciting. Um, but anyone actually can sign up for an account. You can only create in Manifold if you're at an institution that has a Manifold platform, but anyone can actually read it and anyone can also create a reading group where anyone can annotate it also. It has built in social annotation as a platform. So. That's really helpful. Thank you for explaining more about Manifold because I, <laughs> that's a really exciting resource too. Fantastic. Oh, and I should just thank, like, we also had some folks review our worksheets and Amanda was one of them. So thank you to Amanda also and to everyone who like 
has taken a look at it and we're happy to like add more resources if people see things that they want to add to it like this is like most OER a work in progress that can get revised and remixed forever. Yeah, but this focus on iteration is so powerful. I think we come out of a kind of perfectionistic culture and if it's not perfect, we're taught not to put it out there and and having this space where we it's like this is good enough. I'm a little scared to put it out there, but it's good enough. I'm going to put it out there and we're going to iterate it and then it's going to be awesome for lots of people. I just think this is really empowering. Okay, so we want to hear from all of you, our wonderful audience. I hope, um, sorry, can you see uh, menti.com and can you see the code at the top? Is it covered up or can you see the, the magic numbers? We can see it. Okay, beautiful. Um, so I hope um, some of you have had a chance to get in there. The magic number should still be up there. So uh, repurposing some really fun <laughs> images from uh, some of our community calls, actually. Wh what are we up for now? We've had two full days of the conference and uh, maybe we need some rest, <laughs> some relaxation. Oh, some people are ready to party. That's awesome. I'm like set back with some wine. So I do want to say our Thursday late show, which will be the last one of these late shows, we're going to have Nicole Allen, Allen and Daniel Williamson on here for a wine tasting. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll definitely get to do the, the toasting bit a little bit later on. Okay, so rest is clearly uh, winning here, but there's some other people up for some fun <laughs> and some relaxation. Okay, and then just if you wanted to think about a single word for today, what is today's word for you? Marathon, empowering, packed, full. Yeah, we packed, we packed it in. I think, I think we're all feeling that resonant, informative, friendship, education. Wow, this is, this is fun. And I like how we have um, our color scheme, our open ed color scheme for the words. Isn't that cool? <laughs> full. That's that's really driving driving the word cloud. Full and packed. Whirlwind, ideas, empowering, creative, fast, important. I love it. Education. Okay, let's go on and get just. This is going to be our last mentee uh, element here. But what is a key session related takeaway from today? Now, if you have something key that you're compelled to share and you're like, well, that's not really session related, fine, you know, throw it in here. But, um, so, you know, uh, build strong relationships, center equity. Yeah, we had such a powerful keynote kicking us off this morning. Yeah, center equity and care. I just love that that axis that we saw there where we can think about both equity and care together as these two really important dimensions. Zero textbook cost plans, networking is key, accessibility, our syllabus, building trust over time. Oh, sharing resources, which is fantastic. Publish and share, just like Amanda did. Digital media. Yeah, the care piece is really powerful. I think we're at a place where, where care is radical. How did that happen? Students take the central role. Kind of helping remind us what this is all about, right? Where does this come from? Care is active. Connect, care, share. I have to. Mm, digital media, building partnerships across campus, smart goals. Yeah, that's always good. Okay. Thank you all. I really appreciate you all chiming in here. I'm going to move us forward because I want to give us like a little time for actual conversation with our guests as well. And I, I picked this slide to kind of encapsulate our experience today because it has that heart. We're talking about centering care, centering equity, um, kind of thinking about this as a journey. And for me, when we start bringing emotions and this idea of what, what is really driving you, um, 
digging deep and getting down to that emotional level, it helps me feel like I'm integrating my life, like my personal life, maybe personal interests and my academic life and my professional life. And so this, I don't know, this is <laughs> really, I think very deep. And so I'm really eager to hear, especially from um, my guests here today, what where the keynote and these other um, sessions that you've been to today have taken you and, and what's on your mind. I can start. So I, I, I was elated that the keynote this morning, morning for me, um, you know, centered humanity. And uh, kind of like you were saying, Emily, it is, it is a little bit sad that care is radical, right? Um, that we have to center care and it, it also made me think of historically who's afforded that care and as a result, who is typically not. Um, and so I, I talk about this in, in some of the presentations that I give about how humanity for me or bringing my full human self to the classroom, for example, in front of my students is, it is a radical act because just the mere fact, at, you know, as a queer black woman in higher ed, like that that is a radical political act of my very existence, right? And so to humanize my identity that is constantly dehumanized is an act of resist, resistance, excuse me, is a radical act. And I was just so pleased to see that like, you know, humanity and care was truly centered, um, you know, and I think that's so imperative now with COVID-19 the amount of you know mental um, illnesses, mental health illnesses that are just increasing astronomically, not only among students but faculty as well. Um, I again, I feel like I'm being repetitive, but I was just so so pleased to hear um, you know the lived experiences and the notion that care can be a radical um, act. Uh, loved loved that message, truly did. And it, as a means to achieve equity, that it's essential to equity. That was just really, really on par with how I've been feeling for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, I was really moved by, you know, the keynote. And then also what really stuck with me was I went to a few sessions that use this progressive stacking where um, folks asked people with marginalized identities or it was in, you know, the women of color um, in OER session as well as the sort of feminist pedagogy session. I'm getting the name, I think of that wrong, but, um, and people put stars in front of their names so that they could take up that space and be highlighted first. Um, so finding ways that like you can put equity kind of into your practice and just do it in this very concrete way is helpful for me to think about um, of like, what are ways that I can help do that when I'm leading a session that I can think about that it doesn't just have to be in the women of color session that that happens, but that can happen really in any space. Um, you know, thinking about also just how much space you take up in a meeting. Um, there's this Jewish practice that I've done called Musar and it has this concept of Anava, which is the same thing about space, like how much, and it's connected to like your humility. Um, so I was thinking about that a lot, about how these things all connect together because um, it's this practice of ethics um, and how we have this ethic of care as well and how these are all sort of interconnected ideas that we really need to center in order to do our to do our work and to connect our humanity and to be together. I think people will be happier in, <laughs> in our jobs and in our respective roles, but no, seriously, I, I think, you know, just as faculty, staff, whatever your title is, we'd be happier. Our students would be happier because as a result, we're showcasing that. And I, I love the point that you made, Stacey, about conversational space. I mean, that's something that is really on my radar as well in terms of um, just be conscious about your identity and the assumption that you are supposed to take up conversational space or not take up conversational space. I, I, I love that. I love that you brought that up. Yeah, I will totally plus one what Stacy said because we were in a ton of the same sessions today. Um, but in addition to that, um, I rounded off my day by hosting a session um, where some humanities faculty were talking about how they work together on some OER and the way that they collaborated with their library. And um, 
And they really made an effort to make that visible. And as a librarian, a lot of times our work in that process is very invisible labor. Nobody sees the things that we do to sort of help them get to the end goal and to see instructors really working to um, make that connection very apparent to their audience was just like, oh, my little heart. Um, just very refreshing to see their librarian recognized for all the work that they did and also um, talking about how library resources can also help fill in the affordable gaps when there isn't something for OER and what that looks like and the instructors were so like the audience was so so responsive to that and took away a bunch of ideas um, and it was just really nice after a really long day to sort of end on that really positive like overflowing effervescent kind of love for the kind of work that we do um, and I'm gonna take that away with me once I get some dinner and just like ruminate <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Olga uh, called out, I like that phrase, invisible labor. So true. It's such an important conversation to include as part of this, these OER conversations. I need to move us forward because time flies while we're having fun. So let's give some highlights. I'm going to get let Haley um, talk us through some of these highlights. Oh, sorry. Sure. So some of the some of the great things going on uh, this evening and over the next couple of days that you're gonna want to be sure not to miss. Um, as uh, as the same as yesterday, we have lots of featured lightning talks um, that are available on the website. So if you're one of those people who uh, earlier in the mentee presentation said you were still ready to party, maybe this is the avenue for you. <laughs> um, if you just go to the Open Education Conference website. Um, under the 2020 tab here and lightning talks, so you'll be able to vote for your top three favorites. Um, so by no means do we expect anybody to watch them all. Um, but if you do watch some that really, really resonate with you, um, give them a give them an upvote. Um, and we'll see who comes out the winner at the end. <laughs> um, after this, so tomorrow our plenary session is, is really, really exciting. Um, if you're able to pull up the details, thank you. So we're gonna be chatting about applications of open education during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have some really fantastic policy experts um, in to come chat with us. So Sharon Liu, who's a senior policy advisor from the uh, US Department of Education, as well as Harrison Keller from the Texas Commission of Higher Ed. Um, so be sure uh, to uh, be there for that one. I think the time for that is going to be. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't. Put oh, that. that's okay. It is, I believe, two to three thirty tomorrow. Yeah, two o'clock. Yeah, so, so technically three twenty-five, but I think thinking of it as two to three thirty will serve you well. <laughs> yeah. So this Perfect. is one thing we have to watch: the plenary shift time, different days. So that's that's a good piece as you're anchoring your day. And then yeah. um, the recordings are typically going to be made available the next day. And I didn't go back and check and see if um, the ones from yesterday were up, but that was the hope was that they would be up, you know, 24 hours later. Awesome. And Nicole says we're doing our best. And that's all <laughs> we can ask, right? That's all. Amazing. Cool. Well, other things you can look forward to. I know uh, our tea time uh, yoga on Monday got a lot of positive attention. So if you missed out, there's still another opportunity to come again. So that's going to be Wednesday at 3.30 and that's 3.30 Eastern. Um, also, we are hosting a, a Dungeons and Dragons game tomorrow night for those of you uh, who are interested. There is a, a, a card in SCED um, for you to go on and sign up. That's Wednesday night, uh, 5.30 Eastern. And then there's also a Google Doc um in the description there where we're asking folks to go in and sign up if, if you're interested in playing so be sure to check that out as well and then i think uh, we have raya papaya right here right Woo! the big enchilada won the tuesday taco challenge <laughs> as well as some margaritas so right now like four minutes from now tiffany is going to get on and make these amazing enchiladas and make the winning margarita recipe so as we're ready to to nourish ourselves there's going to be some more fun around this food so congratulations raya 
Yay, congrats. <laughs> And then I think we're just at the end of our late show here. So please do come back tomorrow. The early show with Amy Tan and Winnie starts at 930 Eastern tomorrow. So we have more fun, more fun in store, like three more days. And it's <laughs> so take care of yourself. Hang in there. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank cool. you so much. I, th I really, big shout out to Amanda and Jasmine and Stacy for joining into the show and sharing some of their work and some of their insights. Thank you, Haley, my uh, <laughs> compatriot in the late show here. And thank all of you for showing up. We really appreciate your attention at the end of what has been a very long and full day. We appreciate you spending this time with us.